G'day, Ben from Melbourne here. Just want to do a quick video um, as I recently saw the chills mm. at the recital hall in Melbourne. Um, they are our neighbours, New Zealanders, and a magnificent band, of course. Um, yeah, one of the um, first releases on Flying Nun, of course, on the great Dunedin Double EP, um, well, known for probably uh, Pink Frost, um, Heavenly Pop hit, I Love My Leather Jacket, heaps of great songs by that band. Um, such a good show. Um, sound was incredible. Recital center is, yeah, usually has high art. Um, so it was good to see yeah, a great indie rock gig there. Um, Melbourne band Parsnip opened the show. Whoops. This is their latest album on Antifade called When the Tree Bears Fruit. Now these guys were really good fun. Um, just great. More on the poppy end of indie stuff. Um, really interesting rhythm section. The drummer and the bass player. Um, yeah, played a lot of interesting stuff. Um, all of them sang um, or sort of chanty style vocals in some. Um, lots of oohs and ahs and all of that fun stuff. Really, really good. But anyway, um, back to the chills. Um, fantastic. Uh, yeah, Martin Phillips in fine voice. Um, had a great band as well. Um, I don't know if you know or not, there's been many, many lineups of the chills over the years. Uh, apparently we're up to 21 or something like that. But um, yeah, he puts together good people um, who know what they're doing and they uh, reproduce those songs really, really well. Um, a few funny things happen in the middle of the show. Uh, was stopped at, uh, after a few songs and Martin Phillips decided he'd put some questions out to the audience asking them, whoever uh, gives me the best question, you'll get a free Chills t-shirt. And, um, the, you know, there are a few, we're like, oh, what's your favourite Australian band? And he's like, oh, that's easy. It's the go-betweens. But um, my favourite was some guy yelled out, what size is the T-shirt? And, yeah, he should have won it. Anyway, um, so some other exciting thing he said was that they're going to be reissuing this great album, Submarine Bells, um, which I think is probably the best Chills record outside of kaleidoscope world which is really made up of all of their early singles this was um about 86 i think this was released um and they but they they'd released a lot of singles before then but had never made an album but to martin's mind he was never happy with the mix of this so they, he was saying that by the end of this year probably there's going to be a reissue of this with a remix and it's going to come with a bonus disc of um B-sides and what have you and demos and that which were um, around at the time. Um, so that's very exciting for us Chills fans. And another thing he announced was next year he hopefully will put out a double record um, which will be made up of all of those, as he put, lost Chills songs which were written and recorded but maybe not used in that period from the early 80s up until their first album because there was that big gap so there were a lot of songs um which they would have played live and demoed and m might have uh not quite made the cut for whatever reason but that's going to be a double disc of all that and that sounds really exciting uh as well uh leading up to the gig i watched the great uh doco called the chills the triumph and tragedy of martin phillips really Highly recommend this, um, not if you're just a Chills fan, but if you just like music docos in general, really good. Um, yeah, I didn't know a lot about what happened to Martin from the late 90s on. Um, yeah, life kind of fell apart for him under huge debt after an unsuccessful uh, crack at the American market. 
um, but uh, it has a, yeah, it's it's not uh, you, well, I was going to say it's not your usual drugs and what have you, but there are drugs involved, but it's still, it's not a VH1 kind of, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> it's really, really good. And he seems like a really interesting guy um, and an artist in his own right as well. Really, and, and it interviews quite a few ex-Chills members and another great thing is um, a lot of other Dunedin uh, band members of the time and yeah even sadly in retrospect got to see Hamish Kilgore while he was still alive talking about the chills as well really really good um of course picked up the t-shirt at the show I don't know my never used to get t-shirts but in my old age at gigs I'm getting into it I also got the uh a seven inch which is uh off Scatterbrain, which is the last album by The Chills, which is maybe two years old now. Um, yeah, it's really nice stuff. Um, I'm going to have to, um, yeah, look into getting um, some of the Missing Chills album I have because uh, I kind of stopped around um, the mid to late 90s. And while we're on New Zealand bands, I wanted to also talk about a cool box set I picked up late last year, but it was too late for my um, series of uh, Meet the Neighbours where I talked about all my favourite um, New Zealand bands. And yeah, beautiful box set by the Tall Dwarfs. Um, of course, Tall Dwarfs, legends in New Zealand music, uh, founded in 1981 by Alec Bathgate and Chris Knox, um, known for their use of household objects and hand claps to act as percussion instead of having a drum kit, and a kind of psychedelic mix of lo-fi music, um, yeah, and of course, born out of that Dunedin sound. This box set's called Unraveled, um, covers... 1981 to 2002 um and then over that whole period like it just displays like endless creativity and awesome strangeness um they started off i guess you know what i would call handmade bedroom pop and eventually graduated to more modern technology methods but uh yeah kept their off-center kind of charm and analog in form production style all along the way. Um, sadly, until Chris Knox suffered a stroke in 2009 and that was effectively the end of the band. Um, Chris Knox, of course, legend in the New Zealand scene, the man who loaned the clean, the four track that recorded Tally Ho, um, which pretty much was the start of Flying Nun Records. Um, he was also in one of the first New Zealand punk bands called The Enemy. So his uh, legacy looms large in New Zealand music. Yeah, um, yeah. regardless of like the context of when things were coming out on this, it's just like a non-stop flow of one great tune after another. That's the thing, no matter how lo-fi or um, weird. It's just great tune after tune. It gives have a great skill with melody and um, just exemplifies how much great music the Tall Dwarfs made over the years um, and just how incredibly singular they are. So let's have a little look inside the box because it's, as you can see, it's really, really nice and well put together. And uh, my buddy, the doyen of the box set, Mr. PC31 Mike the Vinyl Policeman he loves the box set so I hope you're enjoying this one so once again that's the actual box itself that it come in and so keeping up with that great design um, great picture of them both there love that and that's the way it looks in the back and just cool labels. We're just on, on black vinyl. Um, so yeah, really, really well done. Um, 
the second record. Um, so again, cool stuff on the label. It's just black vinyl, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, and the other thing about this is, even though when I say lo-fi, uh, the sound's really good, you know, it's it's been mastered really well, this set, um, and probably sounds better than maybe the originals, I don't know, like they're hard to come by a lot of these things. So yeah, the second record set in there, in the box, I mean, great design, like cool stuff, and then has this, love this picture <laughs> really really cool and so this one um, and another fantastic picture on the label and the fourth record and last one so I love these sets which like the theme is uh, repeat well not repeated but it it's really cohesive throughout How's that? That's amazing. And as well, what comes with this is this um, great little booklet. Uh, oh, that's the back. I'll try and display this as best I can. Oh, this is the little blurb that was on the front. So I'll move my finger if you want to pause that and read it. So, lots of great pictures cool like photos from ah oh, here's more blurbage sorry things have fallen out everywhere uh, from their gigs cool stuff here really good stuff you know if you're oh, let's skip the page if you're a fan of new zealand music i would say you'd have to try and track down um, some tall dwarf stuff. It's so good and it's kind of, you know, Chris Knox kind of gets a bit, and well, not disregarding Alec but as well, because um, he's a member of the tall dwarfs, but of course, Chris Knox also released a lot of great solo records, but they seem to get left out of the. Um, conversation a little bit because it's usually all about the clean and the bats and um, the valanes and of course the chills but yeah very important band very important musicians so that's the last page so yeah just thought I would show you that <laughs> Lastly, yeah, I think since also since that um, Meet the Neighbours series I did, I picked up a nice copy of uh, The Chills Brave Words, which was their, oh, 
I got this wrong. Submarine Bells was the second one. This was the first full length there. I apologize. Um, yeah, this is an original or close to copy on Flying Nun. There we go. And I think that's a very young, uh, if I read this correctly, Justin Harwood, who you might recognize, he played for Luna in throughout the whole 90s, I think. Great bass player. And just the vinyl. Yeah, with the nice flying nun labels. So there we go. The Queen and the Tall Dwarfs. Just, um, yeah, having seen that show made me want to have a little talk about it. Great show. If you get a chance to see the chills, Martin Phillips is in fine voice. He's got a great band. They're playing really, really well. So if they come your way, check them out. Sleep up.